video will focus on the concept that we um, uh, mentioned in the beginning of the last video, which is similarity. Um, this is a super common uh, tool that you would use whenever you want to test what's going on in one geographic area against other geographic areas that are very similar. It's almost like trying to find a, 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 a way to control for variables that would differentiate neighborhoods. You know, for example, if you had a neighborhood that was experiencing a spike in, in sort of crime rates and perhaps the neighborhood improvement group instituted a program to try to combat it, well, you might want to test how the crime has uh, dissipated or increased in that neighborhood against several others. But you'd want to make sure that, you know, the underlying neighborhoods are as similar as possible to the one that you're testing and that the only really sort of pertinent variable that would be removed in that instance uh, is the intervention, the crime intervention. Now, you know, it can be challenging uh, to find sort of a perfect match, but a tool like Similarity at least gives you sort of ranked criteria to say, okay, if you give me a series of variables to balance, uh, you know, it could be anything. In this instance, we'll, we'll look at maybe population change, uh, unemployment, and poverty. It will run through all of the sample uh, properties that you give it and try to find those, or sorry, sample polygons that you give it and try to find those which best optimize all of the values and then return them to you. And so we're going to run it on these, this fishnet I created. You know, we're going to look at this sort of sample zone here and then try to find the best ones uh, ultimately to, to compare it to. So this would be under tools, spatial statistics, mapping clusters, and it would be under similarity search. So we'll give it a second to open and it'll ask you for a couple inputs. What should we be matching? Well, we want to match the sample zone, right? So this is, think of this as like the test area, the test neighborhood, the test fishnet, the test point, the thing that you want to look for similarity to. Who are my candidates? Well, we'll say anybody here in trial zones. And again, the reason that trial zones looks the way it does, I, I prepared it before giving it to you. Uh, I removed sort of this neighborhood and those that are around it. Um, just because if you keep the same value in between different ones, then it'll obviously pick right, that square because it would be identical, so I sort of removed it. Um, you can do it in a couple different ways here, so most or least similar, that's kind of a nice one, right, I want to find that's most similar, I want to find those that are least similar. And then ultimately the matched uh, value here, you either pick attribute values, you rank them and prioritize them, or you do an attribute profile. For now, we'll stick with probably the top two. Uh, attribute values is just sort of a balance. Um, I think it's a, a uh, sum of mean squares between sort of all of the attributes. Ranked is where you would sort of say you're the most important and you're the second most important. So I think whichever one you think is most valuable to you, if it's all the same, pick that. If you really feel like one attribute's more important than another, pick that. So I'll pick attribute values. Number of results is like the candidates it's going to bring you, so I'll say five. And my attributes of interest, I'll pick a couple. I'll pick maybe the poverty rate. I'll pick the population change, and I'll pick the auto dependency, I'm picking some weird ones here, and then maybe the gross rent, right? So I'm looking at the rate of poverty, the rent, the population change, and then the percent of the population that depends on automobiles. And that's what I'll run, and I'll try to find sort of the five best fit. And I'll run it. And again, it's sort of taking um, each of the values and it's almost measuring everybody's distance, theoretical distance, right? How far away they are from that value. And then it's taking sort of the average of their squares and the one that gets sort of the optimum value would sort of win, right? It's going to be looking for that census tract that maybe is only like one, two, or half a percentage point away from sort of each of the values. And it's going to be prioritizing that over the one that maybe is like really close to one value, but super far away from some of the others here. 
So hopefully this won't take too long. We'll see if it can, um, you know, just give us the output here. Uh, if we have to wait more than a couple of minutes, I'll, I'll stop the video and, and sort of start and show you what the output looks like. go it's done and the values are going to say one two three and four right i'm matching this feature and there we go right it's telling me look if I, you have to ask me if i have to average all four of those values the best i can give you is sort of here the second best i can give you is here the third best is here fourth best is here and the fifth best is here so again a cool tool right again imagine what it's doing is it's taking the values you picked from each of these it's measuring each of these quote unquote distance. I don't mean distance in the, the sense of how far they are, but value distance, right? How far away is your poverty rate from me? How far is your population change from me? And then it's effectively averaging those distances. And so it's looking for the lowest value, which you would find right here. And that would sort of tell you kind of what its values were, the poverty rate, the gross rate, the sum of the square value differences is 3.35. Right? And that would leave it the top rank.